hole that I live in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That that's fine. Keep yourself in. <laughs> keep yourself in that hole. Welcome back to Poutine Politics, Canadian issues served with cheese curds. My name's Adam. My name's Mike. And we're continuing Wexit Week. Although I suppose it's not really a week anymore. Shh. But Wexit Week. And we don't record podcasts back to back. That doesn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about either. Wexit Week. Wexit Week. <laughs> Even though it'll be on different days. Yep. Let's get fight. We're good. It's we're okay. Good. It's good. still kind of sort of within the same week-ish. It is. You know. Okay. So I want to make sure, I want to pretense this whole entire topic we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about a Western exit, the process that would need to be done fairly and legally if they wanted to do it. Okay. I'm not going to argue about whether or not uh, you have they have any valid arguments. Mm. I will touch on what their arguments are and why they have them. But I'm not going to say, you know, whether or not I agree with you or not. I'm just trying to figure out the process and what it would take if not necessarily just Alberta, if Saskatchewan, Alberta, BC, or some form or combination of that. Some conglomeration, yes. Yeah. Wanted to actually leave properly, fairly, Yes. how that would look. Okay. Now, I know this is a theoretical and would never actually practically happen, but if they wanted to do it legally and fairly, how would that look? There is a process in place, especially yes. because of the whole Quebec separatism situation yes. from the 90s. Yes, because Quebec tried to separate in 95, came very close to winning the referendum. 50.1%. Some, yeah, it was really close. And uh, the actual act, the Clarity Act, that's uh, what it's called, was passed in June of 2000. And it basically says that the House of Commons w can decide on the question, and the question has to be clear, before they vote. So before a referendum happens about a separa separation vote, the House of Commons can vote on it and saying that it's not clear, you have to go back and try again. I'd just like to point out that it took them five years from that referendum vote to pass a bill about this. Well, the referendum didn't happen overnight too, so it took even longer than that. Right. We're good. Okay. So some of the stipulations that were came out of that, it must be a clear majority, almost implying a super majority. Right. Okay. 50.1% 50, um, 50. wouldn't cut it. No. I would think. Uh, they were clear about saying that First Nations must be part of the negotiations. Uh, just like they would have to be part of the negotiations if Alberta tried to separate. Just saying. Yeah. Go take a look at the treaty maps. Okay. okay. We'll, get, gonna there. Get, there. we'll get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. I can assure you, I didn't leave stones unturned, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Okay. The House of Commons can also override any decision that's made if they feel that the question wasn't fair which I don't understand how they can override it even though they're supposed to get it beforehand, but let's just ignore yeah. the stupidity of that situation. <laughs> so, it's so, government being government. So, the, so they hand it back to them with the or when they see the question and they say, yeah, this looks good. And then the referendum happens and it's very clear that whichever province holds the referendum wants to separate and the government can still say, no, your question wasn't good enough. But that, the, you know, you know, question, you know the, the first time when we said it was okay? No, 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 now. Now we're looking at it and we realize that people really didn't understand it, so it's not clear anymore. It's the, it's the conditions, right? So they, they, they first they say the question wasn't clear and now they're saying the conditions weren't met. Okay, perfect. 10 out of 10. They also got the Supreme Court involved with them because there was another province um, that also passed a similar opposing bill. And so they took it in front of the Supreme Court and they basically said, yeah, your Democratic vote about your referendum has no legal bearing. <laughs> I love that part. Uh, that fact makes me so happy. So really, it can only be valid after negotiations between the provinces and the federal government. And notice how I said provinces, not province. Yes. Here's the reason why. Any amendment to the Constitution requires uh, the 50 plus 7 rule. Do you know about the 50 plus 7 rule? So it's 50% of the electorate and at least 7 of the provinces or territories because of the number of provinces or territories. It's a, ma it's a majority of the provinces and territories in the country. Right? Yes. And it's 50% of the population, not 50% of the vote. Yes. 50%. Yeah. Which is key. Because if only half the people show up and you get 51%, that don't mean squat. <laughs> because that's only 25 point something percent of the overall vote. Right. And this is important. Population. So basically, the reason why I bring this all up is basically, one, uh, you have to get all the provinces to agree that it's okay to separate. And two, uh, you have to make sure the House of Commons is okay with it, with your question. Okay. This is important because we're trying to do it legally and fairly and, and, and in good faith, we'll say. Again, I'm not saying whether or not your argument is fair. I'm not saying whether or not it works. I'm just saying. 
for the keep this in mind. <laughs> yes, for the provinces that are looking at this whole thing, Wexit, that want to do this, there are two big things that the reasons why they want to do it. Can you guess what those two are? Oil and gas. <laughs> <laughs> And representation. They, uh, you are right on <laughs> oil and gas. I feel that's two very good reasons for it's, them. It's, it's, it's all the reasons. Okay. That's all the reasons. So that's all the reasons. Equalization. <laughs> yes. Is, yeah. Or like basically that there's that money is going <sighs> away from them to other people. Essentially, we won't go into the equalization payment. I'm not going down that well of infinite oh, asterisks. That's okay. Because that was one of the that was one of the notes I made. So I just wanna I just wanna make a quick note on equalization. But what's your other thing? Climate change pressure. Yeah. I explain more. Which is which? Oh, yes, and that's tied into oil and gas. Okay. Yep. Equalization. I'm just gonna quickly go there. Okay. All right. This will be all fun. right. Very quickly. Okay. The big argument going on right now is all the is all the equalization payments that go to Quebec and basically people that are in support of Wexit are saying, oh, we should stop with equalization payments. We're giving all this money away to Quebec and they don't deserve it and blah, blah, blah. And my answer to that is shut up. OK, obviously, if you feel that it is Alberta who is giving that money to Quebec in equalization payments, you don't understand how the equalization payment system works. The equalization payment system works because it comes from the federal budget. It comes from the federal coffers. Everybody in this country, well, everybody that makes enough money, obviously, pays federal taxes. They pay money to the federal government because they are a citizen of this country. Even if you're not a citizen of this country, you pay federal taxes to the federal government. You can be a permanent resident. You can be a temporary worker. You can be an immigrant who is still going through the process. If you are working and you're making an income in Canada, you pay taxes to the federal government. The federal government then has an equalization calculation to determine where the money under these different transfer programs are is going to go, which provinces they're going to go. Under that equalization calculation, Alberta doesn't get any money back, at least through the standard equalization program. There are There is also a social trans transfer program. There is a health transfer program. They obviously get money for those. But the equalization program, because of how it's calculated, and I would also like to point out that the last time that it was adjusted was when the Harper Conservatives were in power. It has not been touched since then, and they were the last ones to actually make a change. So if it was really that important to Alberta and the party that they keep supporting, they would have made changes that would have made equalization more favorable to Alberta, and they didn't. There, There is an argument against it. <laughs> What's the argument against it? That when uh, other economies are doing well, and Alberta's economy is doing poorly, they still got money and Alberta didn't. So it's not that equalization payments aren't good in principle. It's that the payment calculation method is broken. Okay. There were opportunities for that payment calculation to be... F See, I don't, but, I don't... I don't. I, you're right. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything because we were going to go down this rabbit hole and right, now we're, like, and now we're in this rabbit hole. Like, <laughs> like, and this is, my, this is my point. I'm not saying it's a big point and I, like, I don't know... And I purposely did not do any research on it because in my opinion on equalization payments is this. If you want to look at the pure numbers and say Alberta's getting... has gotten $50 million from equalization payments and Quebec has got $50 billion. Okay? Yeah. Whatever. It's how much money is also being incurred by subsidies. How much money is being incurred by other payment systems and methods? Okay. And how much is it that the particular government in question, and I can pinpoint a one in the Maritimes, where it's that government's fault that they're getting so much equalization payments, not their circumstances. Right. Why should they get it? Because they're poorly run. Mm -hmm. And that's the argument. Right or wrong, that's why I didn't want to go to the validity of the argument. Right, okay. <laughs> right? Because Fair I enough. don't care if they're right or wrong. Right. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not like, there's so many numbers to crunch. I don't feel like taking the time to do it at some point in time. I will, because I care. Right. My closing thing on this would be that in regards to people out West feeling like they're getting a raw deal from the government, or at least getting a raw deal, let's say, more so from a liberal government or a left-wing government, as opposed to a right-wing government, is the conservatives take you for granted. That's my viewpoint. 
that conservatives take you for granted. Look at look at this past election, okay, and look at what percentage of the electorate in Alberta vooted conservative. I want to say it was close to seventy percent. If what I remember, what choice do they have? What choice do they have? There's how many other parties? But they're not good. They're not a better alternative. If you're in, in Alberta, you vote. You're so not the choice. So the choice. Okay. So not, the choice is to just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. No, no, no. I'll get to that too <laughs> because I don't want to jump the gun too much. But okay. if you want to, if you want to follow the model of getting what you want from a government, right? Especially a liberal government, you threaten to leave, and then you get the things you want. We'll see about that. We'll I mean, see if that's we'll see if that's what actually materializes here. I'm not that's saying it's not, say. but yeah. I mean, if that's their goal, props to them. It's genius. It kind of you know the point the points that you're that you're mentioning here about equalization and about climate change and about carbon tax and things like that, and saying that these are the kinds of things that you know the federal government's going to have to work on, work with us on. Like even well, the day the day after the election, Scott Moe, who's the premier of Saskatchewan has this memo or, or, or letter or whatever that is made public and is sent to is sent to Trudeau after the election, basically saying, we understand that the Liberals won. However, you still need to do everything that the Conservatives said they were going to do, like repeal the carbon tax and cancel Bill C-69 and cancel Bill C-48 and restructure the equalization, the equalization payment structure and, and all this stuff. It's like just because you won the election doesn't mean that you have a mandate and you should do exactly what the Conservatives were going to do. That is what Scott Moe's little memo to Justin Trudeau said. And I'm like, buddy, you're a politician and you don't know how politics works. I, I'm not trying to go down the political because there's arguments for and against, and I can understand the arguments for and against equalization. But there's more factors into it than I know about, and there's and I haven't looked at them yet. Right. The reason why I say is equalization because because that's the trigger mechanism. Obviously, it triggered you. Um, <laughs> and I get only it. because I've read about it recently. I mean, on it, like I can admit I've heard of it, but until like two weeks ago, I knew very little about it. I mean, keep in mind that McGinty also pined against it too. Okay, right. Into the early 2000s. Right. So it's not, it's very easy to be a very easily triggerable uh, thing to look at, especially if you're from the have provinces as opposed to the have nots. And the reason why I say climate change is because uh, there are uh, enough of a group of people that understand that climate change is going to be a problem for natural gas res uh, resources, right? So yep. realistically, and I don't mean uh, either if you are from crazy town and believe that climate change isn't a thing or if you understand that it is then you still understand that it's going to become more and more of a factor and you need to deal with it now and if you want to get your oil and gas and everything out out you need to do it as quickly as possible and the reason why i bring up is the i want to i want people to understand the type of voter the type of voter that's going to vote for this is going to be a person that wants to get as much resources out of the ground as quickly as possible mm-hmm and is going to be wants to, is a person that's going to be leaning towards not looking out for the weaker economically as much as the stronger economically. Right. Right. Like that's yeah. a pretense. And I'm not that not political leading. Like doesn't matter, but that's no. a pretense of it. And that's the only thing you can assume everything else you can throw out the window. I don't care about uh, religion. I don't care about ethnicity. I don't care about all that stuff. That does not matter. Yeah. All that matters is that right is is getting it out of the ground and making a lot of money. Yes, yeah. basically. Right? Okay. Here's where it gets fun. <laughs> Who's going to be eligible to vote? Well, I would imagine anybody over the age of 18. Or, uh, sorry, 18 plus. I mean, are Albertans, if Alberta, Alberta decides to exit, when are you going to decide which Albertans can vote and which ones can't? Because well, you, can I, okay. get, you can get an influx either way. You can get a whole bunch of people moving to Alberta that want to be part of the new Alberta and a whole bunch of people leaving Alberta that don't want to be part of Alberta anymore. But are they going to have a chance to vote in the election if they do? Well, I would assume that they would because a person may not decide to move into or out of Alberta until after the vote happens. They may decide, they may decide to make that choice because of the fact that Alberta decides to separate from Canada, right? Um, it's kind of like the people... Uh, which you know, it obviously it obviously didn't it obviously didn't happen the way that you know people made it sound like. But when Donald Trump won the election in 2016, there was there were all those people that were like, if Donald Trump wins this election, I'm moving to Canada. 
Uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Um, no, not I'm, really. I'm, not, I, I'm just saying for the referendum itself, but yeah. and the referendum uh, that will potentially trigger the vote that doesn't actually possibly occur. You still need to have eligible voters as far as that goes, right? Because it then lays into like we're going to deal with the First Nations asterisk hole that it is. <laughs> Here we go, and I'm going to do it as simply as possible. Hey, City of Edmonton. Okay, you're listening, right? Are they voting as an independent group? to stay within Canada or mm-hmm. are they voting as citizens? That's a question that has to be answered. I don't have the answer for them. Good luck, Wexit people. Hmm. You've already We've already described that they're not looking out for those economically weak. Right. So if you want them to vote with you, you got to make sure that they also have concessions in order to get that. Which, is, which has been one of the big problems, I guess, in regards to uh, expansion in the resource sector as well is trying to get first nations on board with it and the only way that you're going to get them on board with it is to give them financial incentives because they're looking they have to they have to look out for their people because they've been taken advantage of for as long as they have right right so now i've heard and i've heard wax that people say that um they're going to better be able to look after people but you have to understand by definition a person voting for wax is going to be looking out more for people that have more GDP than less GDP. Mm-hmm. That's just that's your demographic. So you're going to have to appease those people. So then there's also the problem of the national debt. Because you have to remember, you want to leave Canada on legal and failed terms. Mm-hmm. It's not all our debt. No. You're going to take some of it. Yeah. How much are you going to take? That's got to be figured out beforehand. I wonder how you figure that out, though. Do you figure it out like per capita? Uh, You could do it a proportional way. Yeah. Um, there's probably a way that you could, and you could be negotiated, but I'm not, not talking about the specifics, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about... Just, just they have to you take... You have to take some You've got to take some of it. In because a fair way, yes. you're going to take some. There is certainly money from the federal government that has gone to Alberta and as a result has added to that debt. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you have yeah. to take some of the debt. Correlates just, to the debt. Just stuck it up, buttercup. Okay, now there's military bases. <laughs> and the reason why I separated military bases from the next category, which is coming up shortly... Okay. It's because you could do one of two options with the military. Yeah. You could kick Canada out or you could let Canada look after you. Right. Your choice. But if you kick Canada out, right, we're taking our stuff. Yes. So good luck with your debt. And if you're not, thanks for the rent. <laughs> right? I figured out the solution. What's that? Allow them to separate. Okay. Take the military out of Alberta. Yeah. And then invade. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a solution that a lot of people had for Quebec. Let them yes. separate. <laughs> Send the military back in and be like, hey, we went. <laughs> but then again, that's not legal and that's not fair. I guess. Okay. Then we're talking about federal land and federal property. Banff, Jasper, all the national parks. All the national parks. <laughs> Those are excellent what we call bargaining chips. Yes. What else does Canada own that's a property that or uh, a company? Or something else that's very important to I don't know Alberta. It's important to Alberta. Yeah, that would that would allow them to move resources around. Pipelines. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Again, you. Either, well, we don't own all. We don't own all of them, but I know what you're saying. I, I'm using that as an example. Okay. Uh, you either have a choice of buying it. Yeah. Or renting. It. Yep. The, apparently, there. I, I did read somewhere where at, where there were people that were suggesting that Alberta should buy the Trans Mountain Pipeline from the federal government. Okay. Anyways, I mean, doesn't seem like a bad idea. Maybe the federal government can make some money on it. Okay. Yep. Like, and this is all kind of thing. So this is this is the section I call like to call how much money are you spending up front and how much money you're going to spend ongoing. Those are big questions. Yep. Right. And keep in mind, your whole premise is to not pay the rest of the country. <laughs> So you'll rent it? Oh, no. You'll create a massive debt because that is good for your GDP. Okay. This, uh, is what, this is what they can use the money in the Alberta Heritage Trust Fund for. They can use that money to buy the pipeline. Not if they wax it. Um, well, they could, no, they could because that is, that is a fund that's controlled by Alberta. They could buy the pipeline with that money. Uh, uh, Whether or not that's the best use of the money is another question. Well, I, I, but, I'm not talking about policy as yes. far as how they want to run their perceived new country okay okay so let's get down to where it gets really fun and that's in trade now let's just what you mean they're not just going to be part of nafta 
Let's just assume. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, grant, I'll even grant them that. I'll okay. grant them that they get all the stuff that Canada gets and all the world stages. Now, I don't know how they're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let's okay. just pretend that automatically they just get into everything. Keep in mind that realistically, or even from a legal standpoint, it's going to be very difficult for those no negotiations to take place. And keep in mind that any negotiations going forward from that point in time, you're going to be at a leverage disadvantage because you don't have the GDP of Canada. Yeah. You might be a powerful member of Canada's from a GDP standpoint, but you don't have that power, so you can't throw that away around. Right. It also hurts Canada. I'm not denying that. but It doesn't hurt Canada as much as it would hurt Alberta, let's say, on their own. Yes, by far. And so you're going to have situations where you don't have that leverage. Here's where it gets interesting. What are you going to do with Canada? Because this is where all Wexiters will break down. Yes. Every single one will break at this point. Yeah. It, and, and I don't mean because... The landlock issue, you can around the landlock issue. That's not a problem. <laughs> this is where the core of the issue is, basically. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to have free movement of people? Probably. I would. I mean, I, I would think. Are all Wexiters wanting free movement of people? No. <laughs> I would say the Wex. I go. would say the Wexiters aren't broke because there's some that are and some that aren't. Some right. that realize that they will have a massive job shortage, like they uh, the. Um, uh, Labor shortage. Labor shortage. Labor, labor shortage. shortage, yeah. A massive labor shortage if they don't bring in new people. Yeah, for sure. Where are you going to get them from? Canada? No, no, no. They're just, just going to bring them in from like Mexico and sure. El Salvador and, yeah, right, you right know, whatever. places like that. Places, you know, like where the farmers bring them in from. Okay. All right. <laughs> so it won't be the temporary workers uh, program anymore, though, because, I mean, in the oil and gas sector, you kind of need those workers year round. Yep. Mm. So. And then you got to think about the free movement of trade across because you have to move your stuff somewhere. Yeah. So, and by trade policy, um, you're going to have a situation where you're going to want to move your natural resources. Yeah. You're going to have to move them through Canada or the U.S. Yeah. So you're going to be paying somebody to yeah. move them. So you're still going to have a problem getting your resources to the ocean and you're still going to have problems getting your resources to the market. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, realistically, and uh, uh, um, you're not going to have half split provinces. That's not. No. That that's not. It's, something it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> sure, um, guys, take the whole, uh, take the whole northern interior. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. They're not. You're not going to get the votes that way. No province is going to. I would never vote in favor of a province splitting another province. That's just. I would never do that. Uh, would I vote in favor of a province leaving? Probably not. But let's pretend that they do everything right, then maybe I might consider it. So you're looking at either Alberta, Saskatchewan, Alberta by itself, or Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, or some combination of those three. Not likely yeah. Manitoba. No, not likely Manitoba. I was going to say Manitoba would potentially be more likely than BC, but even then it would be a very slight difference and it would still be no. Yes. <laughs> um, and then you got to look at monetary policy. Basically, who's your banks and what money are you going to use? Are you going to create your own new money? Well, I'm just going to do like a lot of other countries that uh, find it perfectly acceptable to accept uh, U.S. dollars. Use the U.S. economy because then you're paying somebody else. Yeah, I know. So if you're using somebody else's economy. I'm not necessarily saying use the U.S. dollar. I'm just saying there's plenty of countries that you can go to where you can pay them in U.S. dollars and they're perfectly fine in doing that. In your new formed country across the board, what is going to be the currency? Yeah. So if you use the Canadian currency, for instance, you're paying for Canada. And if you're going to do your own then you need to have a national bank and it has to be set up and you have to start up with that cost. This is this is vote number one for the Alberto. They should call it the Alberto. The Alberto. <laughs> so <laughs> here's the thing. So Brexit, one of the things is like it, you can you can destroy Brexit before it even happened just by going, what are you going to do with Northern Ireland? North and it's the same argument here. You say you want to separate, but for what gain? What are you going to gain if you were to separate and do it all properly? First, you have to convince uh, a majority of the country to vote with you. Yeah. And you have to convince the provinces to vote with you. And if enough provinces say no, and we're talking about the Maritimes and Quebec, they're, not, they're just going to say no. So you have to give them a financial incentive to say yes. But that's what you were trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. So at the very foundation, you're not going to win. Not, not that it would be a popular move, but... They could solve a lot of their economic issues by, and I this and this is not an original thought because I've been reading about it too. They could solve a lot of their economic issues that they're having by introducing a sales tax, like every other province has. 
I know that I'm, this is not me advocating for it. This is me just saying that it's something that they could look into. Their monetary policy could be looked into. Uh, yeah. Sales taxes and revenue taxes and things like that are all mechanisms they can use uh, poorly or not poorly. What concessions or incentives would you have to make to get that done? And then um, you're looking at who can vote. What are you going to do to incentivize the uh, indigenous people to vote with you? How are you going to yeah. keep the recognize them? Because if you're going to give them more money, again, this is the people that don't want to look after the financially weak. Yep. I don't mean weak from the standpoint of that they're uh, weak in any way, shape, form, but I mean financially, the yeah. indigenous people across the country are... They've been disadvantaged. Disadvantaged, yep. and they're financially weak. Yep. So you're going to give them incentive, even though you don't like to do that. Yeah, but you're going to have to. But you're going to have to, because you're not going to get the votes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Or are you going to let them separate? Or are you going to let them keep their own land in your own pro- in your own country? In which case, you don't have an Alberta, right? Um, <laughs> or Saskatchewan, or a Saskatchewan, or you know, even if even if they were potentially interested in it, pretty much you wouldn't have much of a Manitoba either, right? Like, I mean, that's that's why I said earlier: look at a map of the treaty lands, and tell me how this makes sense, despite how they've been treated throughout history by the federal government why would the indigenous people leave canada yeah like you have to make it you have to make it better for them to stay than to leave yep right so that's going to be that situation and that's a part of that act that was brought out and that's a part of the constitution that we have that you're a part of also how much debt are you going to incur before day one or how much payments are you going to be making to your former government yeah. that you want to avoid? Like, so you're either going to have a massive, and I mean almost crippling debt, yeah. realistically. Oh, yeah. Or you're going to be making payments to the government that you don't make payments to. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm like, I mean, I'm not going to say here that sit here and pretend that I know the exact figures. I don't. Um, but either you're going to be paying interest to a bank yeah. or you're going to be paying rent payments to Canada. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, guess. you might come out ahead in some right. former scenario, but you're not talking about. I, I can't see you coming up massively ahead. They part of their argument where they would say that they are coming, they would be uh, further ahead as a result is that they're not having to pay taxes to the federal government, right? Uh, under under the under this circuit, I, I would assume because let's let's assume that they can do all this and not not raise the tax rate in Alberta. Sure. Okay. So they eliminate the federal taxes that they would pay to the federal government. So keeping in mind that federal tax rates right now run anywhere from 15 to 33%, depending on your income. Okay. Mm -hmm. You eliminate that money. That money is not going anywhere anymore because it's not going to the federal government. And we're saying that Alberta is not going to raise their taxes because the argument, again, I, I think going back to the equalization situation would be that the argument would be that if people from Alberta are not paying into the equalization program anymore, then there's no need for those taxes to the government. But that doesn't take into account, again, social programs, health care programs, infrastructure spending. Uh, you know, infrastructure spending doesn't just come from the province. It comes from the federal government as well. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I'm saying that if a well-informed citizen that knows that just because you lose one government doesn't mean that you don't have to pay taxes into the other government. So they, yeah. they just replace. Let, let's pretend that... Well, they'd have to increase taxes. They would have to. Um, like they're ta- I think, if I'm not mistaken, the tax, the provincial tax rates in Alberta, let's ju- just talking about income tax. I'm not talking about anything else. Just keep it simple. Income tax starts at 10% and I think only goes up to 14% if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, my, my basic point is, is this. You don't know whether or not uh, how much... It's whether or not they can lower taxes or raise taxes in order to make up the difference. So right. Speak. And but the reality is, is that even if you don't lower it or raise it, you're not going to get this massive check. Even if let's pretend that you had a perfect government, everything went perfectly for you and you're able to get everything the way it was. You're still not going to get a massive check back. Like no. You're not going to get this massive rebate. That's right. Like, let's say Alberta lost $10 billion in equalization payments last year. Even if everything went perfectly for them in this scenario, you're not going to get $10 billion back. No. You might be lucky if you get a billion. And that's if everything goes perfectly. And you could be on the other side of it where you're instead spending an additional $15 billion either to a bank or to Canada because you're renting. Yeah. 
I think I think the agreement would be that it would be getting paid to Canada, right? Because it's because it would be payments on their portion of the debt, essentially, right? Is that what you're talking about? No, or, no, no. I mean, like if they're just, if they're renting, uh, uh, like if they don't buy Banff, if they don't buy oh, the pipeline, okay. things like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. They either they either have to pay it in a debt form, yeah. and then they're they're paying interest on it, or they have to pay it in. Uh, they have to rent, and if they're renting, they're making payments to the government, which is what they're trying to avoid. Right. So you're making payments one way or another. Yeah. Choose your poison. Yeah. Are you coming out ahead? I doubt it. Probably not. I'm sure. But, I, I'm sure. I'm sure the federal government in Canada would be able to negotiate it in such a way that it's not advantageous. Even if you can get a little bit, you're not getting, you're not going to be getting all of it back. You're going to get a very slim portion. You're going to get a portion of a portion, so to speak. Yeah. So you're not getting all this money back. And you're in a situation where your number one reason why your GDP is high is going away. Yep. So you're in a race. And if you're in a race, if you're paying massive debt, you're behind the eight ball. Yep. And if you're making payments, you're not winning from the standpoint of you're not getting what you want from Wexit. Right. You want control and you want to not have to make as many payments. In the end result, they could be they could be ramping up production just to pay more money to Canada anyways. Yeah. Or someone else. Yeah. Like who cares? Yeah. Who, who cares who your overlords are? That's right. That's right. It's still money out of your pocket. I mean, it could be like... Like if I do I care Bangladesh. I don't do I care if I have to make a payment to the government, my federal, municipal, or provincial government? No. Right. They're all taking money from me. That's right. I don't care. It's a tax. It, yeah. It it all hurts me the same way. So yeah. Uh I fine wegs it. Um anyone who thinks when I hear uh, on the news where do they have a do they have a chance and stuff like that, I'm just like, no. They don't. They will get crushed because of the Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. The Supreme Court ruling is enough that any politician with any merit off the record, never on the record, they should never say this on the of record. Of course. Of course. They should say, you have no chance. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that should be their conversation. You will never get 50% agreement in Canada, population-wise. Yeah. No, you're never going to yeah. happen. And you're well, never going to get mean, seven provinces to agree. I think with the election in Alberta. Yeah, and so I guess I, that's seven. I and if know. I remember right, that technically the UCP winning the election in Alberta made it seven provinces or territories with conservative parties as, that mm. were as, that were leading or that that were that were running the government they of, still the, have to have 50%. of the provinces. Yes, they still have to have fifty percent of the population. So Good luck. right. Yeah, I just look at it like I look at it like it's not from the standpoint of whether or not the validity of their argument because I don't care, but. You have to understand if you're trying to promote Wexit, you need to be realistic. And like, how are you going to get that as a clear, concise question yeah. on a ballot? Not not clear. Not doesn't have to be concise. Sorry, a clear question that is going to be answered before you can have a referendum that the House of Commons can then vote down. <laughs> I still, I still like. That's the best part of the whole thing. Even if, even if we said the question was fine, and even if you got enough of the vote, we could still say the conditions aren't met. The conditions aren't met. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the drawing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, can't leave Canada. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, like you like can get seventy percent of the people said yes, but it it wasn't clear enough. They didn't know what they were voting yes for. I mean, they, they the condition, conditions weren't met. The conditions Sorry. weren't met. That's Sorry, right. there was a pro there was a section of your province that voted <laughs> sixty to forty against. Yeah, that's like the that's like the the proportional representation referendum we had in Ontario, right? Where it was like fifty percent of the electorate and fifty percent in every uh, riding. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but it was some. It was stupid. There was, there was no way. No way. There was no way it was going to happen. It just it it was impossible. Yeah, it and was. that's why we don't have proportional representation in Ontario because it was impossible. Yes. Yeah. So, what kind of voting system would uh, would a would a Wexit take? <laughs> Adam might be stabbed by the end of this prog podcast. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> what? <Ugh. laughs> Electoral college. Y yes, exactly. Exactly. Every every uh, regional municipality or county or whatever would uh, would have a certain number of votes. <laughs> they'd have to have a... Hey, they'd, uh, they'd, have, they'd have a Senate, wouldn't they? I mean, I'm sure they would still follow like Westminster uh, style... I don't know. Westminster I style elections. I think they would And Parliament. I think they would only have one. I can't see them having two. Yeah. I think they would have one. Whatever. It's irrelevant. It's never going to happen. So. No, it's, it's, it's no chance. That's why I laugh at it. I'm like, you guys have no chance. Like, yeah. I just want to go on the Facebook page right now and be like, you realize you have no chance of this happening, right? Like, you understand. Like, and this is why I say. Hold on. That go ahead. 
Keep going. That uh, if uh, Wegsit's whole purpose, secretly, like uh, whispers, wink, winks, is to try and leverage the government, much like I found the uh, Quebec separatism movement. Yeah. They're do- that that that's genius. <sighs> See it? I can't. Yeah. I. I know you can't get behind <sighs> it, but I I still tip my hat. Fine. No, I, I just, I just, while we're, while we're talking here, I went on the, the on the vote exit Facebook group and it's like, in order to make a post or to comment on a post, you have to join the group. And I'm like, I really want to do it, but I don't want to join the group. <laughs> I joined the group. I don't care. I Did you? No. Pages can now join groups. Oh, I could join votewexit.com as Putin politics. Oh my God. <laughs> it's happening right now. Oh, question. Hold on. What's the question? Please bookmark our websites. Wexitalberta.com, Wexitsask.com, Wexitmanitoba.com. Oh, they're included. They're including Manitoba in this. I it's, told you they were. But, but the, hold on though, the, uh, their their banner picture includes BC. I don't like for the for this Western Al- for this Western Canada Republic or whatever. They want to. They don't have, but they don't have a website called Wexit BC. Uh, I think it's called something else. No, it's uh, please bookmark our websites: Wexit Alberta, Wexit Sask, Wexit Manitoba, Wexit Events, and Wexit Store. Wexit Store. Wait, we can get merch? Write an answer. Okay. Submit. <laughs> this is fine. Admins there. will receive your answers. You'll be notified if your request to join has been approved. We're not going to get approved. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, we'll find out. Maybe we'll have an update that for the our next hey, episode. Bud. Hey, bud, we got approved. Oh, man. So uh, <laughs> now that we've gone off on a bit of a tangent, I guess we'll uh, we'll f- we'll finish off our Wags at Week by saying... You're not leaving. It's good luck. <laughs> I, <laughs> You're just not leaving. Like I remember reading one that said uh, a big oil article. It's like, oh, we could always go and uh, and join the United States. And I'm always like, yeah. And why would they do that? And see Puerto Rico while well, that well that's going. <laughs> exactly. Statehood. Statehood. No, you can vote for president, but it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they can send a representative to the to the. Uh, to their legislative assembly, they have no power, voting power. Yeah, exactly. They're just there. They're just there. <laughs> so I can look, I guess. Because Alberta's totally just going to become the 51st state. Just like that. Boom. Yeah. Anyways. All right. So that's our take on Western separation and Wexit and all that fun jazz that's been in the news and probably shouldn't be because it's just Pointless. exacerbating. It's exacerbating the situation beyond where it really should be the news shouldn't cover that it's a thing the news should squash it absolutely i agree anyways i don't, I don't care if you want to cover it but squash it. squash it say that it's a bad thing because <laughs> it is simple as that anyways this has been poutine politics my name's adam my name's mike we'll talk to you soon